a bright sun. I was <laughs> once I find a beautiful, a beautiful sunrise, I have to find a <laughs> a place to be able to see you guys because the way I'm facing right now, I am directly facing the sun. <laughs> but I said, you know, when I was driving around and I found a spot, and I said, oh my God, that's the angle right there. That's the angle. I, oh, I gotta get it. I gotta get it. And so, I, oh, 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 hush, hush radio, hush the name of Jesus. <laughs> I don't need to hear news. News right now is what we're about to talk about. <laughs> amen. Amen. So the word today, amen, the Lord gave me for today is really about, he gave me a revelation, before I give you the, the word title, I was teaching a class last night at the, uh, our fellowship where we, I was ordained. And we, a lot of times we go back and we teach for upcoming ministers and training. And the topic was on excellence. Uh, excellence being do the best you can to work towards its excellence in ministry. Good morning, sweet knees, sweet knee. Amen. Amen. So, so as well, as we were talking about excellence and, and in ministry and how do you feel? It was funny. It was all talking about how do you feel? What kind of job are you doing? And do you, are you think you're doing a good job and just analyzing anything when you approach excellence? But then the Lord said, while I was, while I was actually doing the lesson, he said, well, don't take the word job, job out and use the word ministry. Everywhere it says, are you proud of how you're doing your ministry? That being the job, right? Are you proud of who you are? Are you doing the best towards excellence in ministry? And so this list of, as this list of things was going that I was sharing with them, in my spirit, the Lord started talking to me. While I'm talking to them, he's talking to me as I'm talking about the excellence in, in, in terms of what we're trying to achieve, right? So the revelation he suddenly hit me with was... Is this what I had to do to get more time with you? Now, that came very close to something you said to me years ago. Because remember when I told you uh, when I was, had that book called The Elijah Task and that one sentence that said, if God has to remove everything close to you in your life to get you to where he needs you to be to work for his kingdom, then he will remove it. And I remember when I first heard that, as I was sharing with you in the previous lesson, that when he said that, that rocked me so, that rocked my spirit so much that I said, well, wait a minute now. Now, wait, at the time, the only thing he had stopped was all my acting jobs, and I had to go get an all-night graveyard shift doing security because all the acting work seemed to have just stopped suddenly. And because cause I was ripping the race and trying to do everything myself instead of what? cast my care on you, if you care for me, let him take it. I was trying to do everything myself, run myself ragged. So he just said, well, you know, let me just show you who's in charge. So he stopped everything in the acting business. I went to get a uh, job security overnight. And when you work overnight, there's a lot of quiet time. <laughs> and you get to hear the Lord real loud when you're sitting there in the, in, during the night of quiet stillness. And he just started talking to me left and right, all, all kinds of things. So when I was reading this book, then I read that statement on top of everything I'm sharing with you. Then that really rocked me because I'm saying, well, right now the only thing he's taken from me is, is my acting jobs. But this book says, this statement says, if God has to remove everything that's close to you in order to get you to where you need to be, he will do it. So then I started running down the list of, of other things that are close to me and people that are close to me and things that are dear to me. And I said, wait a minute. Lord, okay, let, let me get my act together, Lord, because cause, cause I, I, I don't want you to take anything else away because if, 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 if I need to make a correction, I'm going to make a correction right now. And that leads to my title for the day, What Has God Got to Do to Get You to Spend Time with Him? What has God got to do to get you to spend more time with Him? That's our, that's our title for today's message. And that's why the scripture was saying, I press toward the mark. When you're pressing, that means you're pressing against something, uh, a resistance. Uh, well, that's my own camera in my face. <laughs> I'm trying to say, where, where's that shadow coming from? Let me turn it a different way. Let me turn it this way because now I can actually see the comments. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to see, what's that big shadow in my face? It's the camera. Oh, amen. Let Ching out you right there. Amen. So, get around here. I'm adjusting my camera so I can not only see... Uh, let me do a little change here. Much better, much better. Oh, there it is, there it is. Um, 
So in the, in the process of this revelation that he gave me, I'm suddenly realizing that I need to get a grip because this is all happening. This now, What got me, this is all happening while I'm teaching this class. He's telling me all this in my spirit while I'm teaching them on excellence. He's telling me this, all the times you've been injured or without a job or without a car, you prayed like nothing else to me. You gave me all this quality time. But then when you're healthy, we got a job, you got a car, I can't find you. But yet when I take these things away from you, you give me the quality time I need when you should be giving that to me without me having to stop things in your life. So our goal really should be seeking to, to give as much time and quality time to the Lord when we aren't in need of something. And so that way we're praising him heavily in a season of health. We're praising him heavily in prosperity. We're praising him when we've got no transportation problems. We're praising him heavily 24-7 when everything's fine, not just when things are bad. Because that way we're 24-7 being able to be used at any time. Let's say everything's going right for you right now and he and he wants to use use you as a blessing and you've got no job problems you got all the prosperity you got your cars you got everything you need in life to be happy and he's trying to use you but you're just so busy doing all the earthly errands and chores and socializing all the stuff and he can't find time he can't find you to stand still enough for him to be using you as a blessing and so that's what the, why the title of this is what has God got to do to get more quality time with you now this is a two-fold question because if you're already spending that kind of time with the Lord, then I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> but this was actually a self-evaluation for me as it was in the lesson as I was teaching it last night. And it may be a self-evaluation for you. Are you right now giving the Lord the quality amount of time that you should be? Or are you rushing through prayers? Or you say, well, go ahead, Lord, I'll come back later and do the real prayer. God, thank you, Lord, for another day. In Jesus' name, amen. Boom, gone. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up. Boom, gone. Or are you sitting there, and like we do, that's why I let about seven minutes go by with the sunrise before I say a word as far as the message for the day. Because if those seven minutes that we wake up with the sunrise every morning are the only seven minutes he gets from you today, and that's seven quality minutes. See, it's almost just like when you're doing regular parenting. It's like, it's like quality time is much more important than quick, shallow time. If we're just saying, uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. You re you're remembering the Lord by saying, thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But he's trying to talk to you and give you a message. He's trying to talk to you and give you a solution to a problem you prayed for. He's trying to give you a a revelation as to who to go or what direction to go that might give you the provision you need for a financial breakthrough. But, but all you, all the time you're giving him is thank you, Jesus, praise God, hallelujah. But 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 he's trying. To, but 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 son, I I got an answer for you. But you're not standing still. You're too busy to let me give you the answer you prayed for. I, you prayed for you prayed for deliverance. You prayed for provision. You prayed for healing. I'm trying to give it to you, but you won't stand still long enough for me to bless you amen <laughs> amen sweetie <laughs> you know, so so this is really a, a lesson both for sharing the revelation he gave me last night as well as a reflection of my life but also to allow you to ask yourself am i giving the lord all the quality time he needs and, and what i mean by he needs and quality time doesn't have to be an hour. Like I, I did basking in his presence and God's healing our power for us to bask in his presence, to really pray for healing or deliverance or reconciliation of, uh, from, a, from a challenge. But quality time with the Lord is being still long enough for him to give you a divine message, a divine guidance or an answer. If, and a lot of times when you're sitting there in stillness, it, it always, you got to stand still. Regardless of whatever else you do, standing still is the most important step because it's when you stand still that you're still long enough for him to talk to you 
and for you to hear him. He, he could be talking to us all day long, but if we're running around with chickens like our head cut off and won't stand still long enough, oh, oh, God, you're saying something to me. Wait a minute. Hold up. I missed that. You see, this world is so wrapped up in being rush, 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 rush. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. We're so busy rushing around with life. We forget, and that's a blog I did a, few, uh, a year ago. We're so caught up in life that we forget to look up to the one who is our source. And 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 and, and the reason that title came to me uh, last year, no, it was last year it was, and it's so funny, it's amazing to me how God will give you all kinds of revelations on whatever job you've got. And right now I'm doing a lot of driving, and that's just, which is why I do golden nuggets in the car, because of the amount of revelations he gives me driving. I said, you know what? <laughs> it is, yeah, I, I should just stop and make the car the set, because of the amount of talking he does to me in the car. Uh, what was he said that? Is it possible to stand still and not hear from him? Good question, Sister Renee. The question is, is it possible to stand still and not hear from him? I think sometimes when, sometimes in the standing still, to answer your question, sometimes the standing still is what he wants you to do. He might not have a specific guidance message or answer that day. But your mission that day is to stand still. Because if you're a person like I was before before this injury, which is what the revelation was, before this injury I'm currently recovering from, it was, I was so busy, I was not sta even standing still just to enjoy the sunset or sunrise. And as now I'm addicted to the sunrise and sunset. So now, now I know that if I'm busy for the rest of this day, I came out here and just relaxed and enjoyed watching his glory rising from the horizon or setting in the horizon. If that message is the only message I get that day, that's teaching me how to stand still. Now, I didn't get, sometimes I don't get a uh, revelation message or answer during that time because during that time, the actual mission is to stand still. So to answer your question there is when that is our purpose for just basking in his presence, that is the assignment in that particular time. Now, when things come to you, when you're just basking in the sunrise or sunset or in the day and you just, oh, sitting back and just loving on the Lord, and all of a sudden you start getting answers. You start giving ideas. Now he's using that same time to give you knowledge as to what you need to res resolve some of the challenges that you prayed for. Because basking and giving him time just to bask in his presence, that should be something that is automatically what we do every day, period, just to be in his presence. You might be saying, well, Lord, I don't want anything today. I just want to I just want to be close to you. I'm just I just came here to just enjoy watching you do the sunrise. And I'm not asking for anything, Lord. I'm just here to just watch your glory. And see, that's when you're in the perfect time and space to hear from him because you're now in the spiritual mindset of standing still in peace, enjoying him and being able to hear from him. Amen. So that's the goal of he's not going to make you stop and praise him. He just say, well, I, I got the answer. I got the answer of what you need uh, when you stand still long enough to hear the answer I'm trying to give you or the healing or whatever. And see, and, and, and in, in the message that he was giving me last night, regarding my current injury and uh, recovery. Uh, and he said, and, and, and tying it in with what we talked about a few nuggets ago where we don't know what God's master plan is for our injury, our infirmity, or whatever it is. But during the times of challenge, whether, whether it's physical challenge, uh, struggling with whatever we're dealing with struggles, we praise God anyhow through whatever the struggle is because that's then taking the struggle and using the struggle as a blessing. You say, how can a struggle be a blessing? Because if you're praising God anyhow, you're still blessing people even though you're going through struggling times. See, see, just like it, like it says in Matthew, when we fast, when we fast and pray, 
We shouldn't be showtime. Oh, man, I've been fasting for a week. You're trying to show off. I've been fasting and praying, and you're announcing it. Fasting and praying is a very private thing with God. And in Matthews, I'll find that, that scripture, uh, if those who somebody want on, wants to look that for me while I'm talking, where I think it's around Matthew chapter 6, -ish, I believe, or 5, where it says, when you fast, do not boast about fasting because we're fasting and praying for God. We're boasting to man about how long we've been fasting and praying. That's almost like you're trying to impress man where fasting and praying is really about breaking through things in your life that you prayed for. Amen? Uh, let's see. Sister Marie, you say what? Pertain to your previous comment. Uh, those act okay, because those actions of Psalm 109, those actions are deceitful and will fall upon all encouraged as well as the blessing used to get we return to a curse from the Most High. Talking about the fasting, you know. Uh, your, fun, your son is facing persecution at school. How to go forward in school. Sister Margaret, get him to start doing the basking with us, uh, the, immersing himself in the Word. Because see, as we talked about with a young lady who's being talked about, uh, about being ugly and that she had no worth and all that stuff. See, you, get him to understand who he is in Christ. Because when the persecution of peer pressure, peer pressure is all about making you either do what they're doing, talk about you because you're different, make you feel in some way that you're inferior with the group or you have to do what they're doing. And if you don't fall in line with the group, then the attack is going to be seriously heavy. But when the group understands that you can resist and exist without them, then see, their, their only joy is seeing you become sad from their persecution. If, you, if, it, if it bounces right off you, well, that's no fun. I mean, he, he can actually take this ridicule. He can take this persecution. We want to, we want to make somebody cry. We want to make, make somebody break down. We want to make somebody come beg us to be a part of us. That's what peer pressure is all about in schools. I watched it for 20 years. And if, and if a person could care less about those who are trying to pressure through persecution and peer pressure, then the peer pressure generally stopped because that behavior is not giving them what they want. Amen? Dialga, welcome, welcome. This is Dai. So we're talking about how, how to use the God's light and, and, and strength through face of persecution, whether it's persecution at school, peer pressure. Uh, Sister Berlin from London, she may not be on right now, but she the, the testimony I shared last night in, in Bible study for those who weren't there, we prayed about a week ago about some Jehovah Witnesses that were at her job persecuting her and just talking about her as a Christian. And I mean, she was going through a serious stress attack about this, this constant battering at work. So we prayed the blood of Jesus and that you, you and every knee shall bow in the name of Jesus and know who you are in Christ. So she just told me two days ago, she said, thank you, for, Minister Fitz, thank you for that prayer. The Lord moved in a mighty way I never would expect it. What God did came and moved in that situation. He moved one of the persecutors away from the job completely, then promoted her over the other two. <laughs> so now she's the boss of the two that were ridiculing her, and God completely removed the third one. So see, in the same thing that he's dealing with his school, He's, uh, and when we talk about develop a, a thick skin, and I used to be the same way because when I was in high school, I was quiet, and, and in college, I almost punched out a guy because I wasn't chasing women the way he thought I should have because I wasn't into chasing women. But he started ridiculing me about it, and when I just stopped saying, hey, look, you can talk about me all I want. This is who I am. Who I am is who I'm going to be, regardless of what you're trying to change me to make me, which is all that persecution is about. So... So encourage him, Sister Margaret, to just be confident in who he is. Hold on to that and keep in prayer. Because when you know who you are in Christ, it doesn't matter what battering and talking about. We're not here to please man. We're here to please God. And then when we're walking in that confidence of pleasing our Lord God and our Savior, then that keeps us in the center of who we are. And all this ridicule and badgering and peer pressure, all this other stuff around us, it becomes like busy bees buzzing in our ears. We just get thee behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. And in name, and, and matter of fact, he can say that at school. You know, you know, never knowing where they're coming from spiritually.
but you're on the way to school in the name of Jesus Lord put a hedge of protection around me from any peer pressure coming my way in the name of Jesus I'm a child of God nothing shall by any means hurt me Lord protect me from any hurt harm or danger that may come to me or try to come to me in school today in Jesus name see we don't schools today are in some a sad condition in terms of the the range of people who can pr promote violence in schools so we got to teach our kids in school to be as prayed up as we are when we go into the world because a lot of kids in schools do not have prayed up parents, which means all kinds of spirits are coming into some of the kids in schools. So we've got to pray, uh, hit your protection. Matter of fact, well, let's do that. I'm sorry, right, Sister Regina, right now, let's do that. Right now, Father God, we lift up uh, Sister Margaret's son right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Keep a hedge of protection around him 24-7, Lord. Protecting him from any hurt, harm, or danger in any way in the name of Jesus. He is a child of God and nothing shall by any means hurt him. Let the blood of Jesus cover him head to foot, Lord, keeping him calm and giving him the confidence to know who he is in Christ in the name of Jesus, Lord. And give him the boldness to stand firm as to who he is in the name of Jesus. And give him the victory over every challenge, every struggle, every ridicule. Give him the victory over that right now in the name of Jesus everywhere he goes. And let his light of confidence and boldness transform others around him and this and the ridicule and badgering will stop in persecution in the name of jesus amen amen so uh, let me walk in so try that sister uh, margaret i, I assure you yeah, amen <laughs> see regina high school can especially be brutal and there's so many young people who are now i mean my, we probably know people right now uh that we know whose damage emotionally happened in the high school age and they're still struggling with it as an adult because of the damage the venom did as a teenager you know they used to have that saying sticks and stones may break my bones but names will never hurt that is a lie i changed it sticks and stones may break my bones but the pain from words can last forever and that's the real truth because that's why they have such cases of teenage suicide uh, that if, if a person doesn't know who they are and they listen to this ridicule, one girl several years ago, her, her persecution was over social media. The girl became so depressed, she committed suicide, and, and she wasn't in the presence. She was reading the social media, or the Facebooks and uh, Instagrams, all that. They were ridiculing her through social media. And she looked, listened to that, read that stuff, took it to heart, and it took her down, and she took her life. And see, that's the kind of stuff we got to keep our kids protected from a hedge of protection because, because you know, yeah, we got to keep that hedge of protection. Uh, what did you say, uh, uh, Prithia? Praise God. You know, he will show up on your job and fix whatever it is. He'll show up at school. He, when you just call on the name of Jesus, he'll show up wherever you need him because that's what we say, call on the name of Jesus because when we call his name, he's already right there. It's not going to be a, Oh, how long is it going to take you to come back here, Lord? No, he's already right there. He's always right there where you are. So when you say, help me, Lord, help is there. Thank you, Jesus. Keep me safe. He's already there. Angels around us, unaware. Look, and then you're going to even pray that, Lord, Lord, let your guardian angels be around me 24-7 as I walk into this dangerous situation and protect me from any dangerous situation, even if I don't know about it. Keep me protected in the name of Jesus. Amen. See, that's what praying without ceasing is. It's not praying like nonstop for 24 hours. It's whenever you find yourself in a situation that you need God, instantly you start praying. That's what praying without ceasing really means. It means you're ready to pray at the drop of a hat. Whatever need for you, somebody you walking by might need prayer. Somebody just asks you, could you pray for me? You pray. You're ready to pray at any time. And that's part of pray without ceasing. It's, it's pray without ceasing is getting used to praying all the time, but it's also meaning you're ready to pray for yourself or anyone at any given moment. Amen. So praise God. That's basically what this lesson today is all about. Start with basically what has God got to do to get your attention, which is what the main part of it is all about. But the main thing being when we make sure we're giving God that quality time, that's what it's all about as far as as is just being in tune with his guidance of what he wants us to do each day, who to pray for each day, where to go, and just stay in tune with his word. Amen. Mm -hmm.